Consumer spending surged in August to an eight-year high, then plummeted in September by the largest amount in nine months, then eked out an increase in October. What caused the increase? What caused the decrease? What is consumer spending anyway? That's today's question on The Economist's Militia. The U.S. Commerce Department in August told us that consumer spending rocketed upward at the fastest pace since October of 2001. August's biggest increases came from sales of durable goods, which rose a massive 5.3 percent. That increase was attributed to the Cash for Clunkers program, the U.S. government's car allowance rebate system. The program ended in August, and most analysts expected that the boost in spending would be a one-time event. Now, it's a great sign that the revenue from Cash for Clunkers showed up on the Commerce Department's radar because it gives us a chance to accurately measure the immediate and short-term effect of that stimulus on the economy. The broad expectation was that the snapback to reality in September's numbers would produce a chilling effect on the fourth quarter. So far, that's just what's happened. So what makes up the Commerce Department's consumer spending numbers? It's political dogma that consumer spending represents the vast majority of e total economic activity. As is typical, the truth is a bit harder to pin down quite so simply. Consumer spending is more correctly called Personal Consumption Expenditures, or PCE. PCE data is collected by the U.S. Department of Commerce Bureau of Economic Analysis. PCE, or consumer spending, is broken into three categories. Durable goods, like motor vehicles, furnishings, and other items with a life of more than three years. Non-durable goods, like food and beverage purchased for off-premise consumption, gasoline, clothing, and other items with a life of less than three years, and services, like housing and utilities, health care, restaurant visits, insurance, and other services. So when we say consumer spending was up 1.3% and that one element, durable goods, is up 5.3% because of the Cash for Clunkers program, what does that mean? It means the other elements were flat or falling. Non-durable goods, clothing, gasoline, grocery store sales, they were up fractionally in services, restaurant spending, health care, and insurance were anemic. In this case, a rising tide does not lift all boats. Rather, it hides problems. September's consumer spending data showed those problems with a decrease in durable goods spending of 8.7%, which was the snap back from cash for clunkers. The non-durable goods and services elements were both up slightly, but the result was an overall decrease in consumer spending of 0.7%. It also means the September numbers showed a return to normal. Unfortunately, normal is pretty crummy right now, and a one-month increase followed by a decline demonstrates that poor policy makes little economic change. Remember that one of our concerns about cash for clunkers was a redistribution effect, that we would push money from one month to another rather than bring in new buyers to the showrooms? In large measure, that looks like what happened. October's data showed a small increase in overall spending with increases of each element of the index. Durable goods increased 2%, non-durables went up by 0.2%, and services rose by 0.3%. Look for November's data to be an early Christmas present on December 23rd at 8.30 in the morning. Do you think we'll be getting coal for Christmas? <laughs> Keep looking at the data. Keep asking tough questions. As surely as so many Democrats are acting like kids in a candy shop with our money, too many Republicans are acting like statues and not acting in our interest to fix the situation. If politicians won't do it, we have to. Tell truth to power. Hear the real story. Think for yourself. Join the conversation at econmilitia.com. Take back your inalienable rights. <laughs>